Hi, this is a Prezi, which is an alternative to PowerPoint. I quite like it, and I like the fact that I found a template with this hourglass, because it represents for me not just the critical thing that poor old Giordano Bruno was burnt for in the 16th century, because he said there is no time, there's only movement. So here we don't see sand moving, but we will see some of my ideas regarding software that is an expression of understanding time, number and measuring in very new and fundamentally different ways. This screenshot is produced by my prototype, which shows 199 blue points that were produced from 200 green points. The method does not know what kind of data there is, whether it's regular or irregular, in other words, predictable if one uses curve fitting thinking or not. In fact, this forecasting method that I've developed is completely generic. Any time series, whether it relates to mathematical data or climate change or in finance terms, shares, indices, you name it, you can use it. Time interval is completely irrelevant to, it works for anything. I tested it mainly with um, financial data and certainly had above average results, but I haven't actually put it into action yet. I've uh, worked with a programmer on it who was very impressed when he saw this screenshot and I developed a specification for an ethical investment network, which I still would like to see built, but who knows who's going to come up with the money to pay programmers to turn this generic method into God knows what applications. One particular aspect that is specific and adds to the genericity or genericness of my approach is that I can look at trend periods, be short, medium or long period for a trend can be taken into account. And if I show that on Excel, you can see the green curve for daily and the uh, yellowish curve for weekly and the brownish curve for two weekly trend periods. So I ended up testing the accuracy of my forecasts in two ways. One, the numerical accuracy, whether the value predicted was above or below the actual number and in the correctness of the, uh, any, uh, of the trend direction, whether it was up or down in any given trend period. So to measure the historic reliability of forecast, forecast is obviously a basis for making use of generic forecasts. And thus I discovered how measuring is an inherent kind of byproduct of my mathematical invention. So this kind of measurement gets embedded in visual selection criteria. That's what adds a new level of users to what I would like to develop as smart knowledge portals. In other words, this is not just a straightforward piece of software, but it is one piece of software that can be used in an expert or smart knowledge system where expert users define selection criteria and set appropriate, acceptable, reasonable boundary values. That is quite critical. BlackRock likes to talk about collective intelligence, so I would love it if we could put our brains together and make something interesting happen. In fact, the visualization of these forecasts of multidimensional data is the next method that I developed. 
as a byproduct or a value adding benefit of very abstract and generalized mathematical thinking. If you think what the left image would look like in Excel, you can see possibly that I'm adding value. I don't know why I didn't put the Excel screenshot here as well, but I guess what I really want to illustrate is that the ability to sort those vertical layers is already an added value. And therefore, we now can kind of create new terms for measuring the slopes between these various frames, as well as the angle of the axis, maybe, if that's relevant and important. But of course, these qualitative metrics all depend on what kind of data you're looking at in the first place. Remember, the current metrological system is based on meter, kilogram and time. So it's, if you like, ma it's mass. But now we are moving into the world and life of data as representing reality rather than the physics of reality itself. We can now add new qualities to the quantities we keep adding to our world of metrology. Yeah, and the two methods can be combined. So forecasts can be layered. I show you here just the aesthetically beautiful sine waves to illustrate that principle. But that's, of course, where the real power is. And that's why I was inspired to make this Prezi, because Neil Curran from Alpha wanted to compare the rainfall in Surrey with the effects of spending advertising budgets and something else that I forgot. But in any case, it is perfectly possible to find visual correlations now between completely or seemingly unrelated data. And therefore, I just show here the abstract genericity or genericness of the ability to forecast and layer. This is the bottom line of my understanding of time, number and measuring and the software necessary to express my thinking such that it adds value to yours and your data. Thank you for listening. Bye.